Hello and welcome, George Committee here. Today we are analyzing a quite a different uh, type of beam that is known as an overhanging beam. And in this case, our beam is uh, loaded as follows. At uh, end E, it is loaded with a point load of uh, 100 kilo newtons. The beam is overhanging between point B and E. At point B, it has a support. A support can either be a wall or a column in this case. Between point uh, D and C, the beam is loaded with a uniformly distributed load of 30 kilonewtons per meter. Again, on the left hand side, the beam is uh, overhanging beyond point E all the way to point C. Now, in this case, we are asked the following questions about this beam. The first question is to plot the SF and the BM diagrams. The second question is to locate the position of maximum bending moment. And that question is to locate the points of contraflexion or the points of inflection. So in this case, we are going to begin with reaction calculations and then thereafter we calculate the shear forces and use those shear forces to plot a shear force diagram. So welcome to our uh, lesson of the day. Please remember to subscribe, remember to hit the notification bell as well. Now, here we have a reaction calculations and remember the sum of anti-clockwise moments is always equal to the sum of anti-clockwise moments. So in this case, we are going to calculate the reactions as follows. We are going to take moments, take moments about point A. Therefore, taking moments about A. We are going to have, so this is going to give us a reaction at B times the distance from B all the way to A, which in this case is 11 meters. That is an anticlockwise moment plus another anticlockwise moment of this UDL between A and C, the overhanging end on the left hand side which in this case will be a UDL of 30 kN per meter multiplied by the span over which it is distributed, which in this case is 3 meters, multiplied by half of that span. This will be equal to clockwise moments, sum of clockwise moments, and one of the clockwise moments that we have is 100 kN times the distance from E all the way to point A. Therefore, we are going to have a hundred times that distance is going to be um, 15 meters. Then we add, we have a UDL between point D and point A, which is a UDL of 30 kN per meter times a span of 5.5 meters times half of that span. 5.5 divided by 2. Therefore, this will lead us to Rb times 11 plus 30 times 3 times 3 over 2. That is going to give us 135 is equals to 100 times 15. That is 1,500 plus this is going to give us 453.75. From there, we are going to have Rb times 11 is equal to, the sum of this uh, 2 is going to be 1,953.75. Then we subtract 135. This will give us 
RB times 11 is equals uh, when we find the difference between these two, we are going to have 1818.75. Now to get the value of RB, we are going to divide both sides by 11. Therefore, uh, the value of reaction at B is going to give us 165.3 kilo newtons. Therefore, we come and light uh, that reaction at this point, 165.3 kilo newtons. Now, to get the reaction at A, we are going to say that the sum of upward forces, which in this case is RB, RA plus RB, is equal to the sum of downward acting forces, which in this case, we have a UDL of 30 kN per meter over a span of 8.5 meters. Therefore, that is going to be 30 times 8.5. Remember, when you multiply UDL times the span over which it is distributed, in short, you are converting the UDL to a point load, or in other words, a concentrated load. Then we add a point load at point E. That is 100 kilo newtons. Therefore, the reaction at A plus reaction at B, which is 165.3, will be equal to 30 times 8.5, that will be 255 plus 100. Therefore, the reaction at A is going to be 355 minus 165.3 which in this case is going to be 355 minus 165.3 that is going to be 189.7 kilo newtons so we come and light uh, 189 Point seven kilo newtons being reaction at point B. Now, after calculating the value of the reactions at support A as well as at support B, the next thing will be shear force calculations, which will help us to plot a shear force diagram below this loaded beam. Now, in this case, we are going to calculate the shear forces between all the sections in on our beam. Now, we are going to begin with the shear force between E and B. That is the overhanging end. Now, the shear force between E and B is going to be negative 100 kilo newtons because on the right hand side of a point between E and B, we only have 100 kilonewtons. And in this case, because it is on the overhanging end, it is going to be negative 100. Then the shear force between B and D, between B and D, will be 100 kilonewtons, which is negative, plus this is an upward acting force in the opposite direction of the 100 kilonewtons. Therefore, this is going to be plus 165.3 kilonewtons. Therefore, when we uh, find, when we find uh, the sum of negative 100 and 165.3, we are going to have 65.3 kilo newtons then from there between point d and point a we have a uniformly distributed load and when we have a uniformly distributed load we are going to have a uniform change of shear force therefore the shear force between uh, shear force between d and a will change uniformly 
will change uniformly from now it will change uniformly from 65.3 kilonewtons which is the shear force between point b and d therefore 65.3 kilonewtons two we take this 65.3 kilonewtons and then we subtract between point d and a we have a udl of 30 kilonewton per meter over a span of 5.5 meters therefore the shear force is going to change from 65.3 kilonewtons to 65.5 uh, 65.3 minus 30 times a span of 5.5 kilonewtons therefore this is going to give us a uh, 65.3 minus 30 times 5.5 that is uh, 165 which in this case is going to be negative 99.7 kilo newtons therefore the shear force between d and a will change from 65.3 kilo newtons to negative 99.7 kilo newtons which will be shown clearly on the shear force diagram. Then from there, we have the shear force at point A. The shear force at point A will be negative 99.7 kilo newtons plus, because this is an upward uh, acting force, plus 189.7 Point seven kilonewtons. So that is going to give us 90 kilonewtons. So that is the shear force at point A. The shear force at point C is going to be this 90 kilonewtons minus between point A and point C we have a UDL of 30 kilonewtons per meter acting over a span of 3 meters. So in this case we are going to convert that UDL to point rod by taking the value of the UDL times the span over which it is distributed. Therefore, that is going to give us zero. Now, after calculating all the shear forces, we are going to use those shear force calculations to plot a shear force diagram, which in this case will be plotted as follows. So we are going to have a uh, a straight horizontal line which is the zero shear force line or the line of origin we are going to begin with the shear force between E and B which in this case is negative 100 kilonewtons now the negative shear forces will be plotted below this uh, horizontal line and the positive shear forces will be plotted above this a horizontal line so negative 100 if we approximate it about that point we are going to have a rectangular a shear force diagram between point E and point B then down here we write the value of that shear force 100 kilonewtons which in this case is negative Shear force between point B and point D is 65.3. Therefore, it is going to appear above this horizontal line. So, 65.3 approximately that point. So, we are going to have a rectangle as well. Therefore, that is 65.3 kilo newtons. From there, we go to shear force between point D and point A, which changes uniformly from 65.3 kilonewtons at this point D all the way to negative 99.7 kilonewtons at point A. So negative below this line, so approximately that point. So we connect these two points together with a smooth slope.
Therefore, this is a negative 99.7 kilo newtons. Then we complete our diagram like that. So this is negative and this is a positive SFD. Then we have the shear force at point A, which is 90 kilo newtons. Therefore, it will be plotted above this horizontal line. So 90 kilo newtons above that point. So we like there are 90 kilo newtons shear force at A. Finally, we have shear force at C, which is a zero. And zero is at this point at C. So we connect those two points together. And we write positive because that is a positive SFD. And then to make our shear force diagram to be more more visible we are going to shade off our outlines yep like this just shade the outlines like this again so that our sfd becomes more clear and also a bit more attractive yeah? rather than leaving it in the other form yeah? Then, down here, we are going to write SFD, denoting shear force diagram. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is how we usually uh, plot a shear force diagram for an overhanging beam. So, in our next lesson, we are going to uh, find the value of the maximum bending moment. And... Under the bending moments calculations, we are also going to determine the value of the maximum bending moment. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for watching our video. If you liked it, please subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, share our video, comment, yeah, write down good comments down there. And you are going to motivate us to continue producing and recording and uploading more and more videos. Thank you very much.